right now, Liquid this week, and then Nigma as well as Alliance to wrap up the rest of their schedule. They got to find a win somewhere in here, Kyle. Indeed they do, and you know they're still not out of it. One and two, OG sitting at two and one. It's a lot of season left to be played, but this is one of those series they've got to come out and look for a W. As you said, first pick, first two brood, rather. I see this in like Division 2 NA. Mm -hmm. I don't know how effective it'll be here against uh, the two-time reigning TI champions. You got to figure they know a thing about the Broodmother. So you would have liked it more if they saved this pick. Is that what you're saying? If they did a four surprise pick. Hey, we're Broodmothering you. You only have one hero to respond now. Uh, I, I think so. Yeah, um, okay. But you never know. I mean, the hero could just be <laughs> Oh, Seb. He's trying to sneak and figure out where the ward Seb. is. And uh, they almost caught him in the act there. Uh, fortunately, he's a tanky, tanky boy with that bracer and being a centaur. They do get the ward, though. True. It was worth. It was. It certainly was. The battle see. begins. I mean, the trouble you have is 3-3 here. Oh, hang on. Okay, well, no, I was like, oh my god, they're gonna kill him? A body block? No, he's gonna be just fine. Um, you don't have the greatest Brood game here. The panel was discussing it. We saw it earlier today. Pangalier against Brood, you just clear those spiders no problem, especially when you're a, a two position. But PL is just a hero you can never really pressure. Yeah. The, uh... It's already off to uh, a bit of an awkward start, about a 300 net worth lead to start things off for OG, getting the three bounties as well as being able to uh, yep. de-ward that one ward. So Tundra already looking uh, a little shaky here, but uh, I, I have faith anyway that they picked up this broodmother with a plan, right? Like they, mm. they had to have scrimmed this out and basically said, okay, this is actually a viable hero as long as we take out these two or three heroes, right? And that's what they did. They banned away, what, Ember? Uh, what else did they ban away? I just remember Ember. And then it was two sideline heroes yeah. that would deal with it. I, I mean, it, it's certainly good. It'll be interesting to see what the item build is, because whatever 3-3 yeah. three, three does, I'm going to just assume, like, this man is... He tests things. Like, I'm sure he'll have something that's fairly min-maxed. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, he was the guy that popularized the Helm of the Dominator pipe build back uh, a couple patches ago. Yeah, yeah. I think something like that could be possible. Maybe he'll go for more of a right-click build, like a Diffusal Beat so, Gabby. You could rush an Orchid. You can get a Solar Crest. There's a lot of different options. And you're going to see a couple of DCs as teams try to fix their ping. I like the way that OG dealt with the Broodmother pick because they didn't actually, out of their side lane, get some sort of big AoE clear. No. Right? You traditionally think of Broodmother and like, oh, I need a way to kill the spiders. But laning phase, that's not the case. He actually doesn't have spiders at all. What they dealt with was the Broodmother wants to charge at you and right-click you, and they got a Phantom Lancer who can doppelgang. Yep. And they've got a Dark Will who can Shadow Realm. So yep. they're going to ink swell, and this Broodmother's going to run at him and look to lifesteal, but won't be able to hit anything. Yep, and that's uh, what we've seen very effective against the Brood pre-Spiders. We uh, troll yesterday in the VP, or two days ago in the VP Navi series, Razor earlier today. Until Spiders, the hero is just a weak laner if you're not able to trade effectively. And as you said, you cannot do it against these heroes. Shadow Demon even. Later on in the game, you just throw out a quick disrupt. No big deal. Also, Fog told me yeah. something about the Willow was that OG see this as an open pick. Apparently, Topson's been playing it a lot mid, going this Midas Ags rush. So mm -hmm. maybe not ideal in this game, but it was definitely something that they considered an option. Something to look out for in the future. Here they pick up and they're like, okay, we need a Pango because we still should have an answer to the spiders in themselves. Uh, more of a mid-game answer, and obviously Pango is easily one of the best yeah. heroes. It's really good against that. PA as well. Yeah. You get the potential disarm procs, buy a bunch of armor items most likely, the disarm. You've got some answers to uh, Mars. If you get the shard, instant magic immunity, you can mm -hmm. roll through the arena, and you can also hop over the arena with shield crash. So a lot of, uh, a lot of different tools there available to you. You can toss people out of arena, right? Can you leap out of Brooding us first game like this, not cool, Fada. No manners, SMH. <laughs> a little bit of a cute, uh, cute all chat there from yeah. Soxa. 
Somebody I don't normally see all chatting a whole lot. Uh, our admin. Uh, we don't have a Phantom Assassin in the game yet, so we can't start just yet. And, uh, yeah, I mean, OG, they got a right to be a little peeved, you know? First two brood. Like, come on, guys. It's like... It's like first two oh, Omni Knight Huskar. It's like, oh, that's the kind of game we're gonna play. You don't want to play Dota today. Yeah, that's how you view it. The, uh, these cheesy heroes are not. Uh, they're not really Dota. Next uh, thing you're gonna say is Techies games aren't normal Dota those games. Those are definitely not. The Brood, I think, after the I played a lot a of Dota different. yesterday, Kyle, and half of them were me playing Techies. And let me just you say, serious? they were all Dota games. Yeah. Why? Because I'm convinced that the hero is legit, and I'm gonna try and figure out how legit it is oh my. you know there's like a lot of other heroes that are legit yeah that aren't techies yeah and i haven't played <laughs> why are we upside down <laughs> uh, the uh, uh techies is not a hero that i have a ton of experience with so i'm learning kyle <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, somebody on this panel has got to be able to, to talk about certain heroes. The hero is this. Okay, sometimes you place mines. I, uh, we, we, there, there's a supposedly a strategy. I'm sure Jackson Pollock would say the same. There's an art form to just splattering paint on the map. Yeah, you trade and uh, immediately suicide for damage. It's very, very entertaining gameplay. I totally agree. Broodmother. It's a bit different now. I don't think it's quite as cheesy. It's more that you just at some point will still have to deal with these spiders cliff walking up and down the map, mm. clearing your jungle. It's gonna be Do you really think tedious. it's less cheesy now that the ultimate is the spiders? I I find so many. Yeah, it's less cheesy. It's just tedious. It's just annoying to play against. What an amazing thing. That is something that they will... Uh... <laughs> that is going to be one of the goals of Tundra's strategy here, right? Is the Broodmother... Hopefully you win your lane, you take that tower early, you get a bunch of spiders and you start just taking over the map, right? And you're taking over such a large share of the map that the PA has a, a, a way just to be able to sit in her triangle and not be bothered because the enemy team is so uh, occupied with a Broodmother pick. Yep. The concern I have is the support duo of Tundra is really susceptible to just being straight up charged at. No real answer to the illusions, a stampede forward can be real tough as... So, this whole mess is all your fault? Pauses continue. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Apparently, we're having slight issues. It's all right. OG, oh, yes, oh, you, as you can see, <laughs> he does indeed not have a, uh, a webcam on. Was that uh, the Curiosity on Mars? Just like an orange... Uh-huh. Just uh -huh. leave the camera off. It's all good. Although, nine... I don't think you were lagging. Well, keep you, you know the 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 hack I've seen uh, some players do is the um, using their phone mm. to connect. So the you know their phone is doing some vertical vertical camera into Discord. We we still get something to see. They don't have to worry about potential lag. Though so I I don't know I. <laughs> I feel like Discord webcam. Yeah, I was about to say, it's 2021. Much, you know? We're uh, like, what kind of computers we got here? Yeah, seriously. That's a perfect. I mean, the chip stream? shortage, perhaps. Like, I feel like streaming takes up a lot of resources too. I think snaking traveled to the EU, so who knows what machine he's on over there? True. I'm gonna say Tundra thus far have been a little disappointed in me this season. I really think Snay was. Uh, Wrong uncut. choice for them? No, uh, opposite. Okay. Uh, uncut Diamond. You know, oh, he's, okay. a, he's been a very solid player for a long time. <laughs> Thought it was stuck. But they just haven't found too much success. We'll see. I think a, a no, lot of their games kind of ride or die with Skeeter's performance. Ay -ay 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 -ay. Somebody's about to get mad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there, there. I believe there is a, a, a time limit. I believe um, at least standard rules are, are usually um, five minutes of total pause time. So this hasn't happened in a while. So. Like not to jinx anything, man. I remember back in the day when there was that Skype vulnerability. Oh, we were God. playing Han. We we had uh, we had a separate internet connection, and we made fake Skype names 
so that we only ever used on our alternate tournament internet yeah. because god forbid somebody finds your ip and you can't change it yeah you just no longer get to play remember the there was like a year navi just couldn't play at land yeah 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 the old days frustrating of... times to be a commentator you, yeah, we take it you for did granted. not look forward to casting any navi games because somebody out there had a grudge all right well it looks like we're Back into the swing of things here as um, Snaking tries to. Uh, I'm, I'm very surprised that they didn't block the pull. Maybe they did, and it's already been dewarded. But I feel like that's the go-to play right now. Is um, instead of buying boots, buying Sentry, uh, and making sure that camps are blocked if you feel like it's disruptive to your lane. And I would argue this is probably a lane that you want the enemy team to be stuck in the lane fighting you rather than being able to do pulling shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Interesting, Notel drops a sentry in the camp. I think that Snake King saw that. Yeah, he's gonna grab it, but does block the two, two o'clock spawn. That's doing a little pressure to 3-3, but man, this is a rough uh, one. No, okay. Notel did not go Shadow Realm. He went Cursed Crown, and as a result, 33 takes advantage and chomps on him a little bit. Fortunately, uh, Notel did have a way. Cut down that tree, but I it felt like that was an unnecessary amount of damage he just took yeah. as a result. Two levels of shield crash out from Thompson here. We've seen uh, more and more people going shield crash level one because the mana cost um, got it's so buffed. cheap now. Yeah. From, yeah, yeah, 80 to 60. So it's incredibly cheap to spam yeah. in lane. They buffed the damage reduction as well on yeah. earlier levels. So that one or two points is really efficient. And especially mid now, with all the bottle uh, with the runes available, it's just always value to be able to push waves out real quick. Top lane. Tried to jump at him. Unfortunately, the Bramble's gotten his way. He couldn't get off the stun. Snaking's definitely dead here. That's going to be your first blood. No Tail picks up that one. See if No Tail can actually get out here. It's not looking so hot for him. So he will get traded out most likely. Oh, healing salve, and he's actually fine. 33 doesn't want to dive into the tower and ruin his own game there. So. Well done. Yeah, definitely a different style of brood coming out though. Is getting the early orb of corruption. I think that's the right choice, right? Because you just have to be trading. We saw a soul ring rush in the previous series. A nice bottle refill from Snaking does die, but helps out his mid player. Trying to make the uh, best of the situation, I suppose. And it also doesn't seem like they're like this duo. Maybe they can survive a Broodmother lane, but they certainly can't pressure a Broodmother. Yeah. At least, not the way I see it. It's starting not to look like the greatest counterpick, to be quite honest. You're getting you know, out CS. Yeah. I don't think it really gets any he's better. 12 and 1? Yeah. Oh, dear. That's not so hot. <laughs> see how it plays out. I mean, bottom lane skiers just straight up free farming. Yeah, and, maybe uh, got the winning. kill earlier. And yeah, it's a last pick Pango. I think that's mostly for the anti brood and mid game team fighting, but uh -huh. as a matchup against Mars mid, it is not watching? ideal for Thompson. Yeah. I like that the Soul Ring build from Nine, so he's just going to continuously spam both spells. And Thompson will do the same, but Mars just hits, uh, packs more of a punch. Yeah. Pango's stats are certainly not the uh, most amazing in the world. Wow. Very slow paced guy. I mean, off to a nice start in the lanes though. Tundra is looking looking solid here. There's the Orb of Corruption. I don't know if this lane ever gets any better for Ana. Like you can't trade with Brood. And he's getting so much passive health regen as well just by sitting in a web. Oh, whoa, Thompson. Yeah, he's gonna go for it. He hit his level six nice and early nine. He's gonna get this kill on Thompson unless Thompson can somehow stop this. He kills a creep to get level six to get the rolling thunder off. And now nine, he's gonna be the one potentially dying here as Thompson looking for a potential angle here. He is not gonna hit him with the last one, but he does have the swashbuckle, times it up wow. and the shield crash yeah, finishes him off. Two, Unbelievable six. play from Thompson. The situational awareness there. Really well done. He's 100% dead, I think, if he doesn't get the ult off. The W from Mars was coming up in just a moment. But rolls and the TP from No Tail to get the turnaround kill. That changes the entire dynamic of this mid wave. Ana is going to take some pressure up top while this goes down. But yeah, we can check this out. He's one creep away. Does he actually get the last hit on it? I believe, yeah, he runs over. Yeah, he sees the melee creep slow. One hit. Swerve. Pops rolling thunder. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't roll straight at him right away, but I guess he was a, a little bit scared there. Nah, if he catches the W, yep, yep yeah. he's dead. 
So he waits out the God's Rebuke, gets close to him as the Curse Crown hits. Just solid, solid Dota play right there from yep. Thompson. It's, uh, who was it that did an interview talking about landing against Thompson? I think, um, was it, was it nine? Anna, he used his doppelganger, so uh, he's having to keep his distance now. I, I missed that interview, to be honest. I think it was Stormstormer who's discussing how Limp was a beast and that he had never beaten Thompson in lane because it's like you always try to kill him and somehow he's like done the math and lives with 30 HP. <laughs> like in this case, he's just, he's sick. So you're like, I had him, but yeah, I, was, I, I was like, he's dead. Yeah. He's dead. And then all of a sudden, He's he, always playing on the edge. There's one creep that's one HP and he hits it and gets level six. Uh, crazy stuff. So long ago, I mean, Thompson's top net worth, but so Nine far so good. I mean, Skeeter is huge. And they can actually get this kill on Anna, which he's going to be forced to and the Inkswell will find the real one here. Kill him. Thompson he, uh, makes an entrance here, but it's not going to do much. 33 is certainly fast enough to deal with the rolling boulder. They're going to go for snaking instead. Silenced up for a second here, and that is enough that, yeah. It doesn't feel like he can go for it anymore. It is, uh, this is kind of Tundra's bread and butter. Like, yes, Seb is pretty annoying now. He'll just cut the wave, farm jungle in the meantime. But Skeeter is free farming, and he's going to have a Battle Fury real quick. I do not believe this is a PL favored matchup anymore. Hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, the shard on PA is also very effective because you'll break, not only do you do the AOE damage, the illusions, but you break him. So there's no juxtapose proc or charge available. And three, four items in, I think you just go toe to toe quite easily. The defusal timing for Ana is going to be what it's all about. Snake King. He uh, will try and juke this one out. That was a nice idea, but Anna spots him. So he dies. Tundra still up by 2k, despite being down a kill here. This will be where the Brood is put to the test, though, because okay. now Centaur with the Vanguard's TP into the blood. Can you still pressure the tower? I don't think so, but maybe you can outfarm. You can take over the map. Holy oh, oh, that's stacks. a lot of stacks. That's OG evening out the net worth if they can get all this. Shout out to No-Tail, doing his part. Can't really do much of the brood, but he can help his allies. A little bit of extra bonus gold going his way, of course, because he was the one who did the stack. Thompson shows up back the lane, missing a little bit of health, but otherwise, not too much worse for wear. Acting like uh, nothing ever happened. Someday they, they have abandoned the bottom lane, though, and Skeeter, you know, maybe gets criticized, and rightfully so, for having a smaller hero pool, but when you give him one of his best heroes and total free farm, that yeah. is when he certainly looks the best. Runs into Thompson here. They're trying to chase him down. They're going to turn around instead, go for the Dark Will. Nice use of the Shadow Run just before the Spear, but he is still very dead. Just the nuking power of Tundra is going to kill this five-position Dark Willow. Yeah. 3-3. Three, three. He, he went for the Arcane Boots, too. Oh, that's, what, uh, is under attack. that's what we saw in the Division 2 game just before this as well. Soul Ring and Arcane Ring, so really feeling like you actually do need the... Uh, it kind of makes sense now that you have, like, uh, a third spell that you're yeah. casting regularly. Like, yeah, maybe you're not using webs all that much like normal, but Silken Bola is just another spell that's going to be taxing your mana pool. Radiance what did, uh, did he break apart the Arcane Boots? Nope. Okay, we'll, we'll see if um, he does something like that. Maybe they even go some team fight items. Nice, Washbuckle hits two. Thompson, though, can actually finish him off. Fata is turning around and getting a little damage in. The uh, Centaur Stampede will allow Thompson not only to get that kill, but Dodge, sh Shield crashes back in for the damage reduction here, so he is a tanky boy. It's going to be hard to bring him down, but they can keep chasing him. He's got one more Swashbuckle over the side. He goes, but surely they've got him this time. Another Shield Crash coming up, but it's too much. Nine, Clay the kill and takes the killing spree away. Has yeah, space created though. But so far it's the three cores of Tundra, all top net worth. You gotta be feeling pretty comfortable in this position. And it it's gonna be the Ana defusal timing that they're waiting for, but I just he's gonna have that about the same time PA finishes Battle Fury at this rate. And that just doesn't seem like a like a great trade. Tundra out to a great start. Have the AA ult prepared.
and it'll be a crimson gold rush on Sep. So there's your anti brood. I believe that reduces all damage from spiders. Yeah, that will help the, the tower survive against these pushes as well, which is something that he can only do so much about, right? Like, he could stand around the tower, but 33 can't ignore him. What can't be ignored here is this smoke move from Tundra. They set this up. 33 was hitting top, and Tundra said, I bet they're going to make a move to try and stop 33 from taking this tower, and they read OG yep. like a book. Really well done. Thompson almost getting the Rolling Thunder off in time, but not quite, so he will die once again. You know, it just doesn't feel like OG have the tools to really get anything going here. For Tundra, it's super simple. Just Mars, Arena, Spear, okay, that's a kill. OG, your setup doesn't really exist. Seb's going for the pure defensive build, which makes sense, but they have no Blink Initiator. They have no support that can really set up properly. It's not as if a disruption is going to be a... Uh, an easy task and something you mentioned earlier which is that og can't just be purely on the defensive mode because you like tundra's Radiant setup against the phantom lancer later yeah. on into this game yeah skeeter is just straight up free farming he will have a battle fury possibly before the defusal on anna is done which is kind of crazy 700 gold away is anna and uh, only 800 for the claymore that skeeter needs to complete his bf but yeah this is looking this is looking good tundra i think do best in these slower paced games i don't know about the first two brood but three three certainly looks comfortable they're gonna try and go for him here they're gonna kill all of his spiders set up the disruption into the rolling thunder then the stomp and he is certainly uh is he he's, he's dead right he's dead they're gonna chase after him the shield crash that'll catch up to him 33 finally does go down meanwhile they're gonna on the other side of things in mid they're gonna try and kill this dark willow who uh actually Wait, managed to get out of the arena instead that... of staying next to the wall fears up nine Wait. and does manage to tp out that shouldn't work did he so he Radiant's was in the river and he was uh, basically he was uh at a position where he was in between the wall and the shield that pushes you back uh -huh. It's basically because the cliff was like right there, so it kind of like ended up pushing him outside of the arena. Okay. Rather than keeping him in. All intended, I'm sure. Ah, just one of those awkward. If he put it a little bit farther down, right, then he'd just be stuck getting hit by the shield over and over again. Radiant's but... bottom tower is under attack. No, that that should. Radiant structures are fortified. He glitches through it. It's gonna pop him out because he's on a cliff. I, cliff. Cliff is gonna I kick guess. him out one way or another. And it's he, I guess he slid underneath he's... it. That makes sense because it's, it's like it's it's oh, positioned okay. on the on the high ground. Right? So he dug a hole. Exactly. Right. So you can hop over it, but in this case, he just goes. Right so when you were saying it. that couldn't work, you you were saying not Dota mechanics wise, but like real world mechanics. Yeah, I mean wise, it's kind of makes right? sense with the lore. Dota are scanning. <laughs> um, and so far so good. It's an even game, but the map control Tundra's exerting right now is kind of nuts. They've just owned this OG top jungle. Nine. And it's sitting here, waiting to go. Doesn't pull the trigger, though. And uh, since they spotted the Ancient Apparition, may still not be able to find an opportunity to pull that trigger, but they are taking a Tier 2 while all this is happening. So Tundra is basically repeating the same thing they did last time, which is they smoked to the Broodmother to protect his game. OG is aware of this, though, and they do have a little bit of counterplay. Nine is going to be slowed down quite heavily here. They might be able to burst down. He's going to use the arena to protect himself for here. Here comes the Rolling Thunder, though. It's going to nail him a couple times, especially with the Stampede. The Dark Willow comes in to try and finish off the job. He gets speared away. Thompson in pursuit. The Swashbuckle. And one more hit. That'll do the job. They get that kill. Can they get a little bit more snaking here? The TP out is successful. OG, you cannot pull the same trick twice against them. This time they learned and adapted. Really nice play from Soxa there. Jukes out all the spells, the defensive disrupt, then the team TP's in, pops the ulti to ensure the Mars kill. Really awkward dive though from Tundra. I understand you have pressure tier two, but Skeeter's not even there. He's probably an ancient stack. You can chill. That's yes. a huge dive. And let's say you even land that kill. Don't think you're getting the tier two out of it once Thompson shows. And in addition, it's a, it's a Soxa Shadow Demon. It's not as if it's a high priority kill. It was definitely one of those smokes where That's it was fun. like, oh, we want something out of this. Yeah. And all we're seeing in the Shattered Demon. Last time, the smoke that they did, it was natural and effective. They were able to move behind a tower and catch a core. That was no way that OG is able to fight once they lose Thompson at the very start uh, of an engagement. But 
you fail to kill a support, yeah, that fight's gonna look a whole lot different. I mean, the thing, the X factor here for OG, check out the net worth chart. Seb is on top. He is just flash farming, spamming double edge. He's, he's level 13 and a quarter highest in game and he just finished a blink so Radiant you're coming online out. with these og cores do you the think centaur can make a difference here oh for sure okay what the, what is the impact of the centaur Dyer's that we're looking for is under I, just the initiation okay. you have Radiant's so much damage potential attack. with an early soul catcher into the into the centaur he's not really killable by any of these tundra heroes just going to absorb the physical damage it's the deso timing on the pa where things start to get a little spooky and it looks like Seb's Seb's actually queued up Ags and Halberd. Curious to see what he goes for first. Tops and tunning spiders. We have oh, already nailed them. Six. You can tell, yeah, the game yeah. lagged a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 576 gold off of spiders so far. So actually not quite as much as I expected given how many spiders he's killed so far, yeah. but and, and there's your impact. The blink on Seb means suddenly OG have the ability to, to actually get kills for the entire first 17 minutes of the game. It's just been the Tundra show. Whereas now, you got the easy setups. This is a little Coming, awkward for 33. I feel like he's likely okay attack. here, but, but still. Pressured a bit by Thompson, who will kill some more spiders. Can we see a CS real quickly? I just want to see a number. 229. As the DD, be cautious fighting into this if you're Tundra. OG is looking to connect, and they have a pretty solid timing here. They've taken control of the gold lead once again, but it's more about the item timings, you know. Everything is online, and they have the defusal, they have the hood on the PL, so he's quite tanky. And then Crimson Guard Blink on the Centaur, so you can't really win a fight if OG are the ones instigating. You need to open with the Mars ulti. Yeah, and that's uh, something that you could see he's put up a blink dagger and has BKB still up there as well. Tries to go for the spear, misses Anna. He's able to doppelganger away in time. Rotations are coming from OG. Just in case uh, Anna wasn't able to escape that initiation, they could potentially get a punish here as Knight's going to be spotted. Spear thrown up, misses. Thompson swashbuckles right past him there and is going to start slowing down Nine. First with the uh, slow and now the rolling thunder. And you can see the impact of the Shadow Demon here making Nine much squishier. Turns around, throws out a God's rebuke, but uh, eventually he's going to be burned out. Tundra not able to do much when their Mars is dead and the mid's being pressured as well now. OG really feeling like they are, as you said, completely turning this game around. Just now Skeeter's going to be gone on. They're going to go after him. They're going to stampede and uh, he's going to be stomped up. They've got a lot of magic damage to throw at him. Another easy kill. Tundra beginning to fall apart now against OG. I, I'm just starting to question the Broodmother pick. To be quite Radiant honest, so he's gonna get the tier two top. Radiant That's quite nice, but it's just—it's the same as the the lower division series. A mech, a hood, I assume a pipe. He'll have greaves, but you know, three three. He TP's to that fight. He's a broodmother with no spiders. Once he does that, so yeah. what's the what's the key? Like, how does this hero actually win you the game as Tundra? Well, I guess the answer would be like most split pushing cores in the past, right? You have to be able to force the enemy team apart and then you get a numbers advantage against them, right? Yeah. But it doesn't feel like Tundra yeah. is actually executing that super well. Because OG, the thing is they have two heroes that can just stop the brood in his tracks, the Pango and the Centaur. 3-3 mm -hmm. is powerless to stop either one of them. Dive. That Ax on Pango is going to be devastating to the damage output from the swashbuckles. Well, the, what would you call them? The swashbuckles on shield crash? The shield crash buckles? No. Either way, it's going to be effective potentially here as Nine is going to be using his first BKB. The Ice Blast is coming in. It's going to be able to hit uh, with no tail on the side. They're still trying to finish up Socks, and eventually he does die. The BKB wears out, and now Thompson is a little effective. Brings the Mars kind of low, no tail. It's just a sliver of HP. 33 is uh, able to go up the cliff there to be able to dodge some of the damage coming in from Anna as well as Thompson. They're trying to chase down the rest, though. Seb, he will just comes in and starts swinging immediately. They're managed to kill Nine. Skeeter, he's going to be chased after. Nice little juke by him, jumping over to Fauna as fast as possible. Anna's quite low, and they could potentially kill him. The Crimson Guard's going to go out. 33 chasing after him underneath the web. 
Rogers tries to be able to catch a real one, and Dom Gangers, can he find the real one now? He actually does, and 33 kills him. He sniffs him out, finds the real Phantom Lancer, and brings him down. Skeeter still playing the edge of the team fight here. And he's 33. Not sure if he's going to be chased down or not, and he is. He's got another web coming up in a second. The Ice Blast kind of hot, though. They could potentially turn this even at oh, three. The disruption uh, uh, to dodge the nuke onto the Centaur, and I don't think he's going to tick out here. Oh, that he's going to be sick. perfectly fine. Some some Matrix Neo level saves coming out from Soxa just as the tagger was about to land. I think almost certainly securing the kill. Amazing no Deso on the PA. He will be off. rushing the BKB. Oh, was the dagger coming out as well? Oh, yeah. Because I saw spawns by Oh, then he was 100% dead. He was going to take like 400 damage there. Yeah, this is a solid game. Damage. OG. It's uh, spawn Spiderlings level 2 to 450. Are scanning. Yeah, so watch yeah, this watch one the again. Piece. He's going to turn around point blank. The dagger's coming. The spawn Spiderlings at the same time. Both are dodged by the disruption. Just nasty. Just in time there. OG just doing a great job playing the map. You know, the 4K gold lead is mostly just because they're shoving lanes faster. Mars has been the guy constantly hunting, but... You know, Dyer's both Centaur and Pangolier above Ana on the PL because they're just shoving waves so fast. I've seen Seb use Double Edge at least a hundred times so far this game. Farming everywhere. That's the Solar Crest finish. Really like that decision over a rushed Ags. I think Solar, even after the slight nerf, is still just the best item to buy on any offlaner. And I again go back to this Brood build. Yeah, he's queued it up now, but, you know, Greaves, Hood before Solar Crest. I think Solar with your PA, isn't that just an insane combination? Yeah. Because the damage output of Tundra is what I feel like is lacking thus far. Yeah, it does feel like, you know, Anna got kind of low in that fight, and they weren't able to just, like, immediately kill him. Centaur is just surviving for so long in these engagements. I, I definitely agree. They are hitting a timing, though, now. They do have the double BKB for Tundra. They're down 5k, but this could easily swing if they just win one engagement. The soul buy, that is perfect. They managed to catch Thompson there. See if they can actually finish him off. The disruption's gonna buy him a little bit of time, but he's getting his spear back. He didn't actually go into the wall, and so he's still alive. He's gonna be able to get off the rolling thunder, and all of a sudden it's disaster for Tundra. And it's Anna, it's right in the midst of them. Mana burning them all down. Two already dead. Uh, 33 will barely make it out with a TP away, but Tundra, I thought they had that. That was the ideal initiation in many ways, but once again, Soxa proves to be the difference maker here. He is just absolutely playing on this game. Remember that dive on top, he set up. That was a kill on nine. Again, the disruption to save an ally, turning the fight, giving him rush. Love Ana. Ana, he has the SNY now. Shard will be the next item. I've heard BSJ gush about this backstage for days. Now it's so good. He, again, nerfed slightly, but still what makes PL good on this patch. Yeah. Ags, oh my god, as soon as he has Ags, that would just be nuts. He's going to break the PA. Skeeter won't be able to do a damn thing. No crit, no evasion. Good luck. Yeah, this is... Uh... This is getting nasty for sure, Tops, and you can see. Man, I just, another, yeah. Another. SD starts. just counters PA, like really, really hard. Yeah. You know, he wants to initiate, you just disrupt the guy he goes for, that removes the attack speed bonus timing from the blink-in, and then, then late game, this is a four position SD, that ag just renders him like, just a worthless hero. Yep. Absolutely. So much more. So 5k, now it becomes 7 as we approach yeah. uh, 25 minutes. Yeah, actually, it makes the BKB of the PA just seem just, you're going to get purged, you're going to get broken through the BKB. Like, what What do you do with no yeah. crit? Yeah. Three charges, too. It used to just be two, I swore, but now three charges of your <laughs> ultimate. I mean, he's going to be able to blink Dude strike on onto somebody, but then he's, if he doesn't kill that person immediately, he's just kited hide it out entirely and very likely he won't if he's uh perched up the one benefit is that after the you can't dispel uh, insatiable hunger even though it's now a normal ability so he can't just do it on all three cores and giggle the moves will certainly be affected and instantly perch out uh inkswell as well yeah right so that is just yet another factor that oof. It, it, it's so uh, interesting come. that OG, and in fact, I'm sure you could talk about this, Kyle, the, the stress of in-game, yeah. of, of losing a game and trying to figure out what you need to do, 
the fact they were able to, to come up with like a very simple, straightforward answer, uh, I always find impressive about any team who is able to do this. A lot, it's, oh, hang on. Thompson, they can try and blow him up as quick as possible. The initiation, the terrorize is going to be too late. It hits Mars and it hits the PA. They're still going to go all the way, man. Stop. And it's in there. They've already taken on the support. The BKB is going to be pumped by Knight. Turns around, got Rebuke, looking for an opportunity here. The BKB wearing out to hit his spirit. He does. He managed to get Soxa with a Brood Mother behind him. They the gobble him up. Soxa, he turns around. He's looking with just one of HP, and he dies, but it doesn't matter. He executed all of his spells onto the Brood Mother, so Brood dies. 33's out for 60 seconds, and Tundra locked inside of their base now against OG, even though it's three on three. Anna is still the big, bad Phantom Lancer knocking at their door that they are afraid to answer. The Shard also paying huge dividends. He's getting so many illusions off at the start of the fight just with one lance. He's also doing bonus damage. It's just like you have an army at all times. Angry forward, just finding Fada. Chine still hiding in the trees here, but they can't do anything unless, oh, okay, a spear thrown out, but the tier three is already dead, and now nine is in some trouble here. He's gonna try and walk his way out of this one. Curse crown is gonna make this a lot harder for him, especially with all those illusions. He's gonna try and scoot on through, but instead they go for Snake King, and it's just gonna keep on going for the sports whenever they show themselves outside of the fountain. Uh oh. Uh oh, Kyle. It's, it's a Phantom Lancer, and it's OG. I feel like there's some fountain farming coming soon. Yeah, this is just, it's insane. The game's just suddenly out of control. And OG just straight up dominating. They, 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 there's no way you see that dive coming if you're Fada. They go straight behind tier two mid. They had vision of him with the ward. You can actually just see him pinged off there. And that starts the whole fight. They get one kill, and then they just continue for more. It's five on four, why not keep going? They lost Hobson, but I mean, I just, again, Seb is just always seems to be the unsung hero of his squad. He's 0 0 15, and not just the way he's played, but the itemization. First off, he's farming all game to ensure his net worth stays not just in pace, but ahead of everybody else for some time. Solar Crest Vlad, so these illusions are even stronger. And he's just finding that was a triple stun. Yeah. Top of there. That uh, was insane, especially since Thompson was already dead, but they recognize, okay, Anna is now the real damage dealer. Yep. And we've got a great initiation here, an opportunity to be able to catch a Tundra. Finally back up is five. They're gonna go for a four-man smoke. See if they can catch backlight. Soulbind does manage to latch in. Thompson, though, already gone magic immune, and Seth gonna be saved by Soxa with the disruption. Once again, the initiation, it's all gone away. Tundra, they thought they had an opening, and it's completely out. And it's demolishing the backline here, sneaking to the dice so fast. He turns back, finishes off the Mars. Nice and easy. No Tail hasn't even used his terrorize until just now to be able to control of the Broodmother for a little bit longer. And Tundra, yeah, you need to get out of the game now, because Hannah is certainly gonna be running at your throne now. I have just clinical, and oh, of course, what would, a, what would an OG game be without...